Over the course of the week, we've been looking at consonants and vowels and at some properties of these sounds. For example, with vowels, we have nasality and length. On this video, we're going to be looking at a property of words called stress. In English, for example, there are syllables in every word that get uh, more prominence or more emphasis. For example, discuss versus discuss. This phenomenon is called stress. And again, we have words in English that have stress. This means that uh, there's one syllable that is more prominent somehow. So we have words like Peter and understand and revelation and return. Notice how these words would sound wrong if we said Peter, understand, revelation, return. So if you place the stress on a different syllable, it does not sound like it's the actual word. It sounds strange. So there's something about words in English where you need to assign stress to a certain syllable. And as a matter of fact, assigning it to a different syllable could change the meaning. So we have pairs in English like present and present, where the, in present, the stress is on the first syllable, and in present, the stress is on the second syllable and they mean different things. So we have many pairs like these in English. For example, record, record, conduct, conduct, frequent, frequent, digest, digest, convict, convict, project, project. So in all of these, the stress is on the first syllable. In all of these, the stress is on the second syllable. And a quick note, by the way, we've been uh, we've gone to a lot of detail about what parts of your mouth are moving when you produce a consonant, what parts of your mouth are interacting when you produce a vowel. So what does it mean for something to have stress phonetically? It's um, it's somewhat complicated because there's several phonetic factors that are interacting uh, for you to perceive that something is a stressed syllable. In English, for example, a stressed syllable becomes slightly longer. For example, record, record, or record. So stressed syllables are longer, and that's the main way that you use to distinguish stressed syllables from unstressed syllables. There's other cues or phonetic cues that we use in English to distinguish stressed from unstressed syllables. For example, the stressed ones have higher pitch, record. They have higher intensity or volume, record. And as we'll look uh, later on, unstressed syllables have uh, slightly different vowels. So for example, schwas are most common in unstressed syllables, like in about uh, or age. So in English, uh, syllable length is the main thing we focus on when we're, uh, when we're trying to produce a stressed syllable. However, this is not true for all languages. Different languages use different uh, cues and use them in, with different priorities when they produce a stressed syllable. For example, in Mandarin, the main thing you do to pronounce a syllable as a stressed syllable is to increase its, its pitch. And then you also use these cues. But these two are the main cues. In Spanish, for example, you practically don't change the duration of the syllable. All syllables have roughly the same duration. What you change is the intensity or the volume of your vowel. So as you can see, stress is not something that is just one thing phonetically. It's like a bundle of different phonetic phenomena that you interpret as stress. In many languages, stress is fixed, which means that it comes on a fixed vowel uh, in the word. For example, in French, stress is always assigned to the last syllable of the word, like in maison, house. As you can see, it's the last syllable. This also happens in languages like Armenian and Cambodian, in Aharjak, sweet, and Piesa language, where the 
last syllable gets the stress. In some languages, the stress is assigned on the penultimate syllable or second to last. In Polish, for example, we get telewizor for TV, telewizor. Uh, for example, the word music is muzika on the penultimate. In Quechua from Peru, we get kanchis, seven. Um, what happens if the word is just one syllable long? Then you get it on the last one. But if you have at least two syllables, you will get it on the penultimate one, on the second to last. Uh, likewise in Macedonian, the, the uh, stress is fixed on the anti penult so two from the last. Beseda means lecture. And for every word that has three or more syllables, the stress is always on the uh, second uh, to the last. There's languages where the f uh, stress falls on the first syllable. For example, in Finnish we have Helsinki on the first one, and in Icelandic we have Kopar uh, for small pots. So, as you can see, there's languages where the stress is always on the same spot. And by the way, I have to mention this this little dash uh, apostrophe here is how the IPA tells you that a syllable is stressed. So it goes before the stressed syllable, maison, maison, with this one indicating that zon is the stressed one. So some languages have a uh, stress that's fixed on a syllable. In some languages, on the other hand, stress is variable and so variable, in fact, that it's unpredictable and you have to learn it when you're learning the word. This is true for Russian, for example. It's true for Spanish which where a difference in stress changes the meaning, but there's no way to systematically predict where the stress is going to go. You have to learn it with the word. For example, uh, papa, papa. This one means potato, this one means dad. Papa, papa. Um, this one means drinks, this one means baby. Bebe, 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 bebe. As you can see, these have the stress on the first one, these have the stress on the second one, and you just have to learn it. Likewise, in Tok uh, Pesin from Papua New Guinea, Palai, Palai. One means lizard, one means fly. And you just have to learn which is which. It's a long story, but English does, English stress is technically predictable. But it is so, the rules are so complicated that in fact, as a learner of English, you just have to learn where the accent goes. Um, in English, you have two main kinds of stress, uh, of syllables. You have stressed syllables and, and weak or unstressed syllables. There's an, a third kind of stress called secondary stress. We'll learn it uh, when we're doing phonology. But for now, let's just focus on stressed and unstressed syllables. So father. This one is father. Banana. And there's something really interesting about English. Most unstressed syllables have schwa as their vowel. The vowels transform into schwas. So this is father. Banana. And these are going to be uh, mostly schwas. There's other vowels that can appear in weak syllables in English or unstressed syllables such as i and e, roses and happy, but not all vowels of English can appear in unstressed syllables of English. We'll look at more details when we study phonological rules, but for now um, what you need to know is that there's stressed and unstressed syllables in English. So in summary, uh, in many languages, there's a syllable in the word that has more prominence than the others. This is called stress. It's not a single phonetic thing, but a bundle of phonetic phenomena like volume and length and so forth. Some languages have fixed stress, stress and in some languages, stress is variable and as a matter of fact, unpredictable, like Spanish or Russian. English has variable stress and the stress can change the meaning of a word, like present, present, and in English, Stressed and unstressed syllables behave slightly differently. Unstressed syllables, for example, are much more likely to have the vowel schwa. Uh, 